Welcome back everybody to our CXO series, The Cube plus NYC Wired. We're high above courtside, I like to say, here at NYSC over the trading floor. The bell has rung and we're off to day two of our CXO series. Super excited to have Duncan Kennedy here. He's the Director of Global Technical Alliances at ProLion. Good to see you. What do you think about this setup? It's oh, pretty awesome, It's isn't it? amazing. Uh, you know, this is actually my first time on the floor. Could not have been uh, on a more beautiful day. So exciting. The Tech Summit is happening um, uh, in, in concomitant with this. So we have all the CXOs are here, some high level speakers, the AI trend is uh, in full swing. And um, I'd just like to talk about ProLion. Yeah, uh, totally. You guys are an interesting company solving a very specific problem. Why don't you tell us about the company and your role? Yeah, absolutely. So again, Duncan Kennedy, I help manage our global technical alliances here at ProLine, specifically focused on the Americas. Uh, and ProLine, we are a unstructured data company focused on ransomware protection for NetApp and Dell primary NAS storage. So we've been around for over 10 years, founded over in Europe, came to the Americas a couple years back, over 1,500 customers globally, and we are on a mission to become the market leader in unstructured data ransomware protection. Interesting. So what's the... Um, angle, first of all, why unstructured data? How does unstructured data, why is it different than sort of the structured data? What kind of unique challenges does it bring to customers? Absolutely, so by all market trends, unstructured data is growing at an unprecedented rate. I think Gartner has an estimation that 80 to 90% of all new data being created is unstructured data. And when you look at the ransomware threat, Primarily, they're going after the unstructured data sets because that's ultimately what you encrypt and then hold for ransom. And so uh, about 10 years ago, our CEO found a need to protect this growing unstructured data footprint, and so that's where we came in. So our swim lane is uh, analyzing all of the file activity analytics and metadata, determining if there are potentially malicious ransomware extensions being used. We can look for potentially uh, uh, malicious ransomware encryption patterns in that metadata. It's a really unique, focused, and targeted approach to ultimately keeping customers' data safe. I want to get into the, the, the technology, but before yeah. we do, let's back up and talk about the state of cybersecurity. You've yeah. got a situation today where you know, it's not just hackers in the basement, you know, teenagers messing around, it's nation states, it's, it's criminals, it's organized criminals, um, it's big business. And they're also very well funded. The adversary is highly capable. So. How do you see the state of cybersecurity generally and ransomware specifically? No, it's a great question. Uh, by all accounts, right, it's, a, it's over a billion dollar industry, right, the ransomware. Uh, you can have kids in their basement trying to break into accounts, but you also have sponsored persistent threat from, from certain nations, right? And ultimately, the goal of these guys is to get to the data. And so, sort of the way I view the cybersecurity world is you look at it from two fronts. You look at it from detection and alerting, and potentially response on the perimeter side, whether that be endpoint, email protection, client, right, what have you, or you simply look at it from a backup and recovery perspective. It's hope we keep them out, and then hope we have a good spot to restore from. We sort of dispute that notion, right? Ultimately, the front end and the back end are dedicated to keeping that data on the internal network safe. And so what we've decided is to refocus in on the primary NAS arrays and say, hey, if something does get into the network and we don't want to have to wait to do a lengthy restore process, why don't we wrap around that unstructured data, we protect it from all known ransomware threats and zero day attacks and be able to stop this in seconds on the actual primary data layer to ensure you don't have downtime, you're limited to a blast radius to less than 100 files affected, you're able to determine exactly where the attack is coming from, what files were affected, and we can even do single file recovery of those affected files from all our GUI. So, okay, so you put like a protective shield around that unstructured structured data. And this is important because there used to be, there still is a notion of dwell time, but dwell time is almost irrelevant now because breakout time is the new metric. And so yes. Dwell time is it, it, the amount of time the hacker was in your environment uh, and you, you undetected. And it used to be, you know, 365 days or more. I mean, now that, that was being compressed. That, metric is irrelevant now because breakout time, the time it takes for an adversary to then traverse the network laterally is like down to under a minute 
now. It's like, yes. I think it was 70 seconds last year. I think CrowdStrike reported it was like 63 seconds or something like that. The world record was like two or three seconds. That's insanely fast. And so you need that protective layer, right, to, to be able to uh, make sure that as they break out, they're not going to steal your data and hold your ransom. They'll go somewhere else if they've got your product. Is, am I getting that right? Yeah, absolutely. So there's when you look at sort of the, the state of cybersecurity reports, you know, look, go back and watch the videos from the RSA conference, what have you. Uh, ultimately, what you see is you're exactly right. The dwell time is down to 10 days as of 2024, but it's about the speed to execution of those encryption payloads. Splunk came out with a great article a few years back around the top 10 speeds of ransomware, and Lockbit came in at number one, which is unfortunate because Lockbit is typically accounts for somewhere around one third of all node ransomware attacks over the last few years. And so that can encrypt upwards of 25,000 files in a minute. So when you talk about uh, these hackers or nation states being able to bypass traditional perimeter protection, get in the network, propagate across via Active Directory, and then gain access to your valuable data, if you only have a detection and alerting response, and you only see, maybe you get an alert after 30 minutes, you're talking about hundreds of thousands of files being affected during that time. That is going to induce downtime, that is going to induce revenue loss, and ultimately all the nasty other side effects. So again, our swim lane is from the second we see that encryption payload start to attack those files, we are able to detect the known ransomware attacks via a block list of over 6,300 known ransomware extensions. We actually manage this globally for all of our customers. So we're going to help you stay up to date with the latest and greatest known ransomware, or two, we're looking for actual metadata encryption patterns. In whether it's zero day or known ransomware, we're going to stop this in less than 10 seconds with less than 100 files affected. When you talk about you know, uh, the ability to sleep at night, knowing your data is safe, that's huge. And the fact that we can stop this so quickly, as well as help uh, remediate, is, is big. Talk about narrowing the blast radius. And we're talking about nation states, we're talking about the big four, which is China, Russia, North Korea, and Iran. I mean, these are well-funded um, you know, operations. How do you guys go to market? So we, uh, great question. We are 100% channel first. So we do have a, a standal, standard three-tier uh, distribution mechanism where we go through our value-added resellers, probably all the ones that, that you know. Uh, we also work with Dell. So as of last year, we signed a global partnership with Dell and we can actually be resold on Dell paper. So one of our key focuses is all of their unstructured data platforms uh, and Dell does have the ability to go direct to market with us, which is a, a huge plus. Well, Dell has, if not the biggest, one of the biggest distribution channels in the business. Yes. I, actually, I would argue it is the number one, you know, sales force in the industry. I mean, sales <laughs> entity yeah. right, is Dell. It's a hundred billion dollar company. <clears throat> you, you know, maybe Microsoft, maybe some of the cloud guys, but certainly when it comes to enterprise tech, uh, people that are actually buying their own NAS systems, you know, you would think Dell is uh, is right up there. So actually, in many ways, your um, challenges to educate the Dell sales force as to the capabilities that you guys have, right? <laughs> so, Absolutely. So send that's, them this video. When you're, yeah, when yeah, you're that's, done. Uh, we'll no, that's, that. a, that's a big part uh, of the job. So talk, been... can you talk a little bit more, Duncan, about your, the unique IP, the technology, the sort of secret sauce behind your product, your offering? Yeah, absolutely. There's this notion, or, or kind of this new uh, buzz word, if you will, or, or buzz phrase, uh, behavioral heuristics or behavioral an analytics. You know, we sort of took a much different approach than that. We actually took a much more targeted approach to ransomware, which can seem simple, but the efficacy is there. And so ultimately what we're going to do is analyze all of the unstructured file activity metadata. So we're seeing every read, write, open, and delete. When you really bake ransomware down, it's sophisticated in the way it gets into the environment, right? Is this a social engineering uh, hack, a phishing scam? Or did they find a CVE in an application? That's where it gets complicated. At the end of the day, once they find the data and they have raised privileges and are ready to drop that encryption payload, it's actually pretty simple, right? Just the encryption of files. Well, there's really only two ways to encrypt a file. You either have to mass replace or mass override it. And the beauty of that is we are able to see those patterns in that file event metadata in seconds, and that's what allows us to be so proactive and actually able to detect and stop those attacks uh, with less than 100 files. You know the old saying, why do you, sir, why do you rob the banks? Because that's where the money is. So where, <laughs> where is the value in unstructured data? Is it the CEO's email? Is it, you know, uh, help us understand you know, in a more tangible way the sort of use cases that you're seeing in the field in terms of 
what are customers really trying to protect? I presume they're trying to protect the entire estate, but where are the real jewels? Yeah, I mean, it's going to be the unstructured data footprint, right? It's what's residing on that NAS. And it can be as simple as a, a small and medium business with some user drives, some home directories, right? But ultimately, that's what all of their users have. Customer access. lists. Customer right? lists, internal uh, IP, source code. You talk uh, a couple years back, I, I want to say EA had an issue where the, some of the FIFA source code was, was stolen, right? So uh, everything from IP to AI, uh, you know, uh, data paths to just user drives and home directories, all of it is is Black channels, graphs. anywhere there's sensitive information that's being discussed. They're trying right? to get to it. You know, HR data, yes. right, that's in there. Um, you know, you're not an AI company, but everybody's an AI company, I guess, <laughs> these days. But is there, is there a relationship between the unstructured data, because AI is, I mean, unstructured data is feeding AI. Yes. So there's, there is a sort of, a, a, a somewhat of an angle there. Is, is there an AI angle? Yeah. To a sense, yes. I mean, when you talk about Dell, right? Uh, they are leading the, the trend towards data lakes and RGA processes and ultimately building these AI uh, workloads that we're going to start to see over the next few years, right? And there's this saying, garbage in, garbage out. You have to determine that the data going in is clean, it's safe, it's, it's unencrypted, uh, and ultimately that is what's going to feed that uh, success in, a, in an AI project. And so where we can come in is ensuring that we can provide deep analytics, deep protection, of that unstructured data to ensure that these AI workloads are successful and fruitful for these organizations. Yeah, Dell's got the deal with Starburst. They're doing a they're kind of rag out of the box yes. and actually showing some pretty interesting results there. Uh, last question, what's the, what's the future look like? What, what, um, what do you want to be able to say a year from now that you're not able to <laughs> say today? Yeah, no, uh, you know, I think we're on a, on a great trend. We're growing like crazy. Um, ultimately, we think we're well positioned in the marketplace. We have our, our legacy NetApp integration. Dell just came on about 12 months ago. Those two comprise about 75% of the unstructured data market. So I, I think over the next 12 months, our goal is to solidify our integrations, bring new features to the table, and continue to uh, ultimately grow our, our customer set. Well, Duncan, thanks for coming into yeah, our Dave, studio so here time. overlooking the uh, NYSE trading floor. It's great to have you. I appreciate it. All right, keep it right there. This is Dave Vellante, The Cube plus NYSE Wired. Uh, this is day two of our CXO series. Keep it right there, right back right after this short break. <laughs>